Hello everyone, my name is Denise and today I'll be tackling the topic obsessiveness. Okay, obsessiveness should not be confused with obsessive compulsive disorder because it does not only happen with OCD per se. If you have um, depressive or anxiety symptoms, you can also be obsessive. Okay, so obsessiveness has the, has the element of um, thinking about a, a a thing or an idea over and over and over and over and over and over again and over and over and over again usually there's a problem and you want to solve it so you keep um, toying around that idea over and over and over and over again I like to emphasize over and over which means that it could be dinner time and you're eating your dinner you're still going through the idea it could be bedtime and you're lying in bed you should be sleeping and resting your mind but you're still thinking about it. It's, this, it's the idea of being out of control. Keep trying to think of a solution to the problem. Okay? It can be any kind of problem. Some people, they'll be thinking about those who aim for perfection. It could be like, um, I'm starting to lose hair, you know, receding hairline or what. So I, how am I going to solve this problem? Okay, Google ways to do hair weaving or you know some kind of, of, of hair products to, to grow hair there. So I, I keep Googling, Googling, trying to find a solution for this. Okay, another obsessiveness with perfection. I've got maybe a small pimple here. I want to have a perfect complexion. We've got small pimple here. Oh no, how am I going to solve it? I'm going to put a lot of pimple cream and stuff and every 5-10 minutes check whether it's perfect. Okay. Or I got a new wrinkle here. Oh, quickly make a appointment with my my dermatologist or my plastic surgeon to to get the Botox done so that when I smile there will not be any more wrinkles. So try to solve the problem. And some of them they do get relief. The compulsion is the thing that gives them relief because it restores them back to perfection. But there are some other things that there are there's like some problems that there's there are no solutions. Like um my obsession is to earn as much money as I can so that my bank account can reach this beautiful nu number it could be one million dollars by the age of 30 years old for example so that I'll be obsessing obsessing ways and ways in my brain to try to up my income and to earn uh, to, to, to increase my earning power so it's not so simple right like wrinkles you can immediately go for Botox uh, receding hairline you can go for some hair weaving um, pimple you just apply pimple cream sometimes things like if your quest for perfection is the number in a bank account, then there'll be no end to it. Okay, so this is a bit confusing, so I'll break it down to make it a bit more uh, approachable, okay, this topic. Obsessiveness tend to pertain mainly to two different kind of, uh, of problems. Firstly, is cleanliness related. Secondly, is perfection related. Okay, so cleanliness related um, tends to be like... Um, has has a sexual undertone. Okay, when I say that, people always flip. Say, no, that's nonsense, and they feel so offended. But let me try to under, try to explain to you. Okay, okay, this is a story that I read from uh, a book on redecision therapy, uh, by the Goldings. So there's this boy, um, around fifteen years old. He was uh, in a very he was lived in a very big family. Okay, so and also very staunch Christian family. So around fifteen years old, what he was. Uh, in a separate hut away from the common house because it's just too crowded so in that small little hut as he was reaching sexual maturity he started to do what most 15 year old boys do started to masturbate and all that at the same time his grandmother is very strict on him saying that this is a very dirty thing that you're doing very dirty thing so you think about the English language dirty right so he started to associate a sexual immorality or sexual dirtiness with with germs dirtiness okay so when he grew up he developed an obsessive compulsive disorder which pertains to cleaning being very clean and also things like um, checking his car multiple times but the root problem actually has nothing to do with, do with it it has to do with the magical thinking linking uh, moral purity moral cleanliness with uh, sec, uh, with what's that with with germ bacterial cleanliness okay that's why I say that those who constantly clean themselves feel dirty somewhere. Either it's moral or maybe sometimes it's their conscience. They feel guilty. They did something wrong or they perceive that is wrong. 
some somewhere along the way maybe they were asked to um, they inadvertently was caught in some kind of web of lies and they feel very guilty for hurting somebody as a result something like that then they'll feel very guilty and then they become obsessive it might come out as repeated hand washing they feel guilty their conscience keeps acting up but they don't know what to do so it pops up in a totally unrelated symptom so it's, it's more deep, deeply seated okay so that it talks about cleanliness okay the second one is perfection some people their obsessiveness is to achieve perfection and and it can be quite bizarre okay you just go to the plastic surgeons and you listen to them a lot of young ladies especially those teenagers these days they, they look for plastic surgeons to to alter their face to look like anime characters because for them that's the mind in their mind that is what perfection looks like okay so that that's troubling because um no real human being can look like that without the help of plastic surgery and even the plastic surgeons are also quite bamboozled like what's what's going on okay if i track that all the way down you know, like when when you look perfect like this anime character what do you really get um i'll be very confident and i will feel i'm attractive okay so when you look like that and you're confident and you feel attractive in what way will you be satisfied well then there'll be a lot of men chasing me and i'll receive a lot of their attention okay so when you look like an anime character you got a lot of love and attention and you'd feel attractive and then a lot of men are chasing you in what way will you truly be satisfied or i will get all the love and admiration that i need and uh, i will not feel lonely anymore and i'll feel worthy of being loved so when it comes to perfection especially in terms of um for women appearance or for men getting a big bank account getting the perfect condominium a big car usually when i trace it down it got it's got something to do with love getting some kind of love and respect from 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 people at large they just don't feel loved enough their need is being frustrated and hence they want to look perfect and it pops up as an obsession so if you don't track it back down and you just focus on the surface it might be quite bizarre like why you're really from a very well-to-do family why you keep working so hard to, to chase after that particular amount of money in a bank account when you track track it down oh, okay it makes sense it has to be the money that you earn so that you are worthy instead of the money that you inherit okay so remember i talk, talked about two preoccupation preoccupation to cleanliness and to perfection okay now let's talk about treatment modalities okay one of the treatment modalities that are commonly used is dialectical behavior therapy which is distraction when you find yourself thinking of a problem over and over again then your therapist come and tell you don't try to find a solution imagine an energy bar here the more you ruminate the more you're obsessed, the energy bar is dropping. Your cognitive ability drops and drops. So using this small little bit of cognitive ability, you still want to think of a good solution, you will not. Just distract yourself, okay? Distract yourself using your five senses. Uh, hold on to a warm cup or take a cold shower or listen to beautiful music. Watch some really entertaining comedy. Just turn your mind away from the topic completely. So that's distraction. I would call it a very first aid way like like uh it's, it's the first aid thing that you can do for yourself at home i quite like that and i think that it works but it doesn't really solve the problem deep down okay okay the next one which is another common uh common modality is cognitive behavior therapy so these are some notes that i prepared for my group therapy okay so okay, this is a cbt vertical case conceptualization so if, if you have the core belief that um, I am somehow inherently flawed then the core belief of others others only respect people who are perfect and then the core belief of the world okay the world is a place that only respects people who are perfect then the dysfunctional assumption is that if I'm not perfect I'm doomed to fail. If I'm not perfect, I will never be loved, right? So the compensatory strategy is to 
seek after perfection with all your strength and all your might and all of your energy and to drain yourself until your whole brain is just drained just to find a solution to be perfect at all times okay so 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 cbt is quite good it, it conceptualizes this and targets all uh, you can target anywhere like um you can target the assumption that you need to be perfect in order to be loved right you can create a beautiful experiment like you go out and interview 10 random strangers and ask them uh, are you married uh, yeah uh, is your wife perfect no must she be perfect to be loved no then why do you still love her oh well she's not perfect but she's adorable and sometimes she she gets angry and she looks ugly sometimes when she wakes up from bed but she's still adorable I like her for her, her, her flaws and her strengths at the same time. She's a normal human being, a complete human being. So by collecting all this input, they hear from 10 random strangers. It might convince the person, you see, as opposed to listening to the counsellor and that they might feel that she, I might be lying to them. So that could be a good strategy. That's what CBT does. Okay. And then the last modality that can be used, not last, uh, are, you can use it, you can attack it many, many ways. But one more common modality would be Choice Theory Reality Therapy, CTRT, believes that, like I mentioned just now, there's one need that's being frustrated, which is possibly the love and belonging need, right? So you can ask them questions. Suppose there is a man, the most likable, adorable man that you can imagine. Okay, maybe um, Keanu Reeves. <laughs> okay, my, my dream lover, Keanu Reeves. Okay. So Keanu Reeves is already beside you and he loves you so much and he says that you are you are okay and you're good enough, you don't have to perfect yourself anymore and every day he spends time with you, listening to you, going out with you, watching your favourite movies with you. So if that happens, will you still have the impetus to keep running back to the uh, plastic surgeon to for Botox, to improve this and that or will that impetus go away? So if the client is really honest with herself, she'll say, nah, I don't have the impetus to go back anymore. In fact, I don't want to waste time running to the plastic surgeon. All I want is to spend all my days with the Keanu Reeves, with my dream lover. I spend time enjoying this world. I don't have to look perfect anymore because I already got what I want. Okay, so that is actually the reason why I was drawn to CTRT because it really gets down deeply to the heart of the problem remember dbt dialectical behavior therapy okay it's a good distraction a good first aid cbt not bad it targets the core beliefs as good experiments but ctrt actually really goes all the way down to what is the need that's being frustrated okay so suppose you have a bit of obsessiveness and it pertains to perfection in order to feel lovable and worthy of love then and and you happen to be christian at the same time then i got something to tell to tell you um, there's really one person who really loves you so much uh, that's Jesus Christ and he's always there loving you looking at you sometimes you just have to pause and turn around look at him and accept his love and that's good enough he'll love you whether you are good or bad on days where you are cheerful and happy or days when you're sad he's always there so if you can tap into this spiritual love and energy, that is a very good cure. Okay, but it's a danger of saying all that because the well, first danger is that you may not be Christian, right? Okay, if you may not, if you're not Christian, that's fine. If you can find other ways to meet your love and belonging need, like go out and make real friends, have conversation with them, connect back to your estranged friends or family members, you also find that this propensity to obsess over your behavior, uh, your your appearance, and and your bank account might. My gender might might drop. Okay, okay. So I won't ramble on anymore. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has been helpful, kindly press subscribe, like, and share it with your friends. Thank you so much, and God bless.